Okay, uh, today I'm gonna be using Cyril on my Mac uh, to do the stacking and some of the pre-processing tasks and then probably finish off with GIMP. This is uh, the second part of uh, my Lagoon No Tracker series. Um, so if you haven't watched the first part um, where I show uh, how, to, how I captured and planned for this shot, um, I'd recommend watching that first. The link will be in the description. And uh, Cyril is a free uh, open source program that's really cool for, as it says here, astronomical image processing. Uh, the website is siril.org. And today, I'm, uh, I think last time I showed uh, Cyril, I went to the download tab here and just used the latest um, release. Uh, the uh, wasn't uh, a beta release, but a uh, um, the the full release that they do um, today. Though I just I'm really interested in their their beta release that they talked about here in the news tab. Um, it's also available here on the download tab under beta testing. Um, and the reason I'm so interested in this one is it's a it's basically a um, uh, an early release of their 1.0 version where they've updated the user interface and done a bunch of other cool things, um, including 32-bit uh, and all kinds of things. So um, I am going to try this. Uh, we'll see if we run into any bugs since it is a beta. Uh, if you're not comfortable with, it, with running beta software, then you can always watch my earlier serial video to see um, the 0.9 release. Um, okay, anyways, I'm, I've gone to the news tab here, clicked on this 1.0 beta testing uh, article, and then if you scroll down to the bottom of the article, there are prepackaged downloads for uh, Windows, Mac OS, and Debian. Um, so I'm going to click on uh, Mac OS, because that's what I'm running here, and then just uh, go ahead and open the, the DMG file. It's a package file for installing Mac software. And just drag this to my applications folder. And replace the existing version. Okay, I can eject this temporary drive now, close out of Chrome. And uh, I'm just gonna go here to my finder and click on go to applications and double click on Cyril. Oh. And if you get this when you first install Cyril that it can't be opened because it's from an unidentified developer, this is a new Mac security setting. One way to get around it is you can just right click on the application and click open from the right click menu. And then instead of just saying cancel, you now have this open button right here and that will let you open the application. Once you do that once, it will remember that setting and will open it uh, every time uh, like that uh, without giving you the security warning. Okay, um, there's a little thing here say, saying that if you, that they're gonna show us an introduction. That's pretty cool. I'll say okay. Okay, we've gone through the little tutorial. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make Cyril full screen here. And uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is change my working directory, which you do by just clicking this little home uh, icon right up here. And I'm going to change my working directory to the desktop and then this Lagoon folder that I created. And if you're new to Cyril, let me show you this folder. Um, this has my biases, my darks, my flats and my lights, just like I showed you uh, uh, in the part one of this video, how I sorted those. Um, we did we did all of that uh, by looking at what was on the camera and then sorting the raw files. Um, so we're we are all ready the, to use a script um, inside Serial because we have a working directory, and then inside that working directory we have these four working directories that have to be named just like this: biases, darks, flats, and lights. Okay, I'll open back up Serial here, and I'm going to 
go to scripts and I'm going to do one shot color pre-processing. All right, and it uh, starts. Um, you can read about what it's doing over here in the console. Um, basically, it's gonna first create um, our master bias, master flat, master dark, then it's going to calibrate the light frames and uh, register them and stack them together. Um, so you can, of course, do all of this uh, manually right here just by following along uh, with pre-processing, meaning calibration, registration, stacking, so forth. Um, but we're um, gonna do it the easy way today um, just to make this video a little uh, shorter and um, uh, use the script OSC for one-shot color pre-processing. Okay, I'll let it do its thing here and it'll probably take uh, uh, quite a while because we're dealing with hundreds of frames and then uh, when it's all done, uh, we'll see what it produces. Okay, it's done with pre-processing. So now I'm just gonna open up the result, which is right here in my Lagoon folder result.fit. And when I open it, it's not gonna look like much. That's because I'm in the linear view mode. So if you've used uh, other programs that do stacking, a lot of times when it's done, it'll just look sort of black like this with maybe a few little white dots that are um, star cores. But uh, this is completely normal uh, result. Uh, what we wanna do is turn on the Pre image preview um, that will give us a stretched view, but only as a preview. It's not actually going to apply the stretch yet. Um, and so we can do some work like background extraction and color calibration when the image is still in this linear state, and then those um, processes will work better. Um, so to turn on that preview, if you look down here at the bottom of the window, there's this little um, display mode uh, option, and it says linear and I'm just gonna change that to auto stretch. Okay, and I guess I had the red channel selected up here, so this is the red channel, there's the green channel, there's the blue channel. So you can see, uh, for some reason, the green channel came out quite a bit brighter than the red and the blue. So if we look at the RGB image, it's um, very green, but that's fine because we're going to do, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is a photometric color calibration, which is going to correct that color balance issue. Um, and so to bring up that process, we go to the image processing menu up here at the top and go down to color calibration and then photometric color calibration. And uh, what we wanna do in here is just type in uh, the relevant details right here. So, uh, well, actually, sorry. So starting at the top, uh, you're first gonna search for um, an object that is in the picture. So that's as close to center as possible. So I'm gonna do um, M20, which is the Trifid Nebula, because that's in the picture. And it's a little bit closer to center than the Lagoon, which is M8. And click Find. Then you just uh, can click on it and it will put in the the RA and deck of that object, uh, telling you that's where you, this picture is pointed. That's good. And then we're gonna put in the focal distance, which was 50 millimeters, and the pixel size in microns. So if you, are, if you don't know what your pixel size is, what you can do is just um, type in the name of your camera. So I was using a Canon 60D and pixel size and uh, if it doesn't pop up right here like in this case it did 4.3 microns if you don't see it there um, like as a, a featured snippet from Wikipedia it you usually can find it in in this website um, digicam database uh, and so pixel pitch is the same thing as pixel size so it's saying 4.2 microns or rounded up 4.3 either is gonna work um, so I'll just type that in here. I'll use the more accurate one of 4.29. Okay, and then that tells me that I have a resolution of 17.6 um, pixels per arc second, um, which is very, very what we call um, undersampled, meaning uh, 
if we really zoomed in on our stars, they would look sort of blocky, but that's okay because this is a wide field image. Um, okay, and then I'm just gonna leave everything else automatic and click okay. Okay, uh, that failed uh, because it said it couldn't plate solve. So I have this hunch that the reason is is because of this black border over here. So I'm gonna try this again, but first I'm going to crop the image. And the way to crop in Cyril is you just draw out a box of where you wanna crop. So I'm gonna try to get as much of this in here as possible but cropping out this black part at the edge. Um, and then you just right click and choose crop. Okay, um, then I'm gonna try running that uh, photometric color calibration again. And just see if this works any better. Okay, my hunch was uh, correct. Um, it was able to plate solve that time uh, after I did the crop, and it did um, seem to uh, apply the correction. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this and go back to my RGB, and you can see now it's a much better color balance. Um, okay, so next up, uh, what we wanna do is um, do a little bit of a background gradient removal. We'll at least try it. I'm not sure if it's gonna work on an image that has so much, uh, it's filled with the Milky Way so much, but I'm just interested to see if it can improve the image a little bit. So let's go up to image processing and go down to background extraction. And I don't want to uh, click generate um, because that automatically applies the samples and it's not very intelligent about uh, placing them. It just places them in a grid basically. Um, and since there's so much Milky Way and Nebulae and stuff in this image, um, I wanna place them myself and I'm gonna place them uh, more strategically. So I'm gonna do it uh, just by left clicking over here in the image. I'm gonna do, oops. It says you can't place them on the RGB, so I'm gonna have to place them here on the red, that's fine. Um, so I'm gonna place them uh, sort of um, on the dark nebulae uh, rather than in this place that's really, in the places which are really um, bright. Um, if you can in your image, you, you won't actually place it on the background sky um, but I've found that, uh, at least with PixInsight, that uh, placing samples on the dark nebulae uh, can work uh, too, um, at least for an image like this one. Um, so, and we just wanna try to get as much coverage as possible. You don't have to place that many samples, usually something like um, eight to 10 is enough. Uh, this, this corner might be an issue because there's not really anything super dark down here, but I'm just gonna place it there. Um, I'll place one down here. Okay, so again, this is an experiment. We'll see how it works. If it looks really wonky, then uh, we can undo it. I'll go ahead and apply. Okay, it's telling me not enough samples. So, okay, I'll do some more. And again, when I'm, when I'm placing these samples, I'm just trying to at this point, just basically trying to pick darker parts of the image um, and avoid big stars. Okay, we'll try that. Okay, it did it. I'm gonna go ahead and click close. And uh, here's before. And here's after. And uh, <laughs> it's a mixed bag. Uh, you know, I don't think it actually, I think it hurt more than it helped. Uh, Cause it's just, it's just changed the, the color balance and, but there's, it, it created different problems, uh, but didn't really uh, work how I wanted it to. So uh, it, if someone has better suggestions for, for how to do that, uh, please let me know in the comments, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna not 
apply that background extraction with this Milky Way shot because it's just it's not working and and that's pretty common even in Pix Insight I, I would have trouble probably extracting a clean background out of a shot that's this filled with Milky Way and honestly there wasn't too much light pollution so it, I, I don't know if it really even needs that and I, I'll probably just crop uh, some of this side and this side a little bit anyways okay um Let's keep moving here. There's not much else to do in Ciro before we move on to uh, the GNU image manipulation program for some final touch-ups. Um, uh, there's probably actually a lot more you could do in here, but I just still am learning the program. Um, so uh, sometimes what I, I like to apply a little bit of color saturation in this linear state. Um, and so I'm just going to apply something like Point two. Uh, let's see if that made any difference at the preview. Eh, maybe I'll do a little more. Let's try point 0.4. Okay, yeah, I think that looks better. So applying a little bit of saturation uh, to the linear image, I think sometimes helps uh, later on in the processing. So I'm gonna apply that. Okay, and if we go back to linear you can see this picture is still uh in its linear state we just have this auto stretch turned on which is why we're seeing it like this okay um before i save this to move into uh gimp um let's change it to 16 bits um converting uh it says may lose some precision that's okay just click okay there there we go save the image in a different name so right next to the save command is uh, that and i want to save it as a tiff file there we go so just pick tiff from this list and click save oh and i guess we didn't have to switch from 32 to 16 up there we could have just done it uh right here in the saving command so uh, you can ignore that earlier when I changed from 32 to 16 there. You can always just do it, I guess, when you save the TIFF. So this is what we want, 16-bit integer. Click Save. Okay, and now we're, we're done with Cyril. We're going to move on to GIMP. Okay, I'm using GIMP 2.10. Uh, that's what I recommend. I think it's the latest major release. Um, you can always just download it straight from their website and we're going to do file open and pick this serial result dot tiff and it says it contains orientation metadata um, I'm saying going to say keep original I'm not sure what that's about okay so here is uh, GIMP. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to fit the whole image into the window here. So I'm going to go to view, zoom, and do fit image in window. Okay, and then the next thing I want you to do is if you see brushes over here, see if you have a tab for histogram. If you do, go ahead and switch to that. And uh, make sure that your histogram is in RGB mode. Um, if you don't see the histogram, just go to Dockable Dialogues and pick it from this list right here, and it should come up. I'm just going to go up here to the Colors um, menu, go down to Levels, grab my mid-tone slider, so this little triangle right here in the middle, and drag it over to the left to start stretching the image. And click OK. And you should see this, this histogram peak come out here. And what we want to start doing, we're just going to keep going back to that colors levels command, is stretch the image. So basically, we're, we're uh, taking something where the dynamic range is very compressed. All the information is compressed into this little peak right here. And we want to stretch it out, make it wider. And we're going to do that by taking the shadow slider and moving it to the right and taking the mid-tone slider and moving it to the left. And each time we do that, it should it should make the the width of this histogram information wider, meaning that we're having we're getting more shadows, midtones and highlights bit by stretching it out and adding contrast. So I'm just going to do that uh, a few more times. And when you take 
this uh, shadow slider. You can move it pretty far over here to the right. You never want to pass the peak, though. So I always bring it to just up to the left side of the peak of the information, but never past. All right, that's a good enough stretch for now. Um, next thing I'm going to do is the image somehow, I guess that was what that message was about, is that it somehow got rotated 180 degrees. So let's go ahead and uh, rotate it back to how we had it before. So I think that's just under view, flip and rotate, and we're just going to rotate 180. Okay, there we go. And then um, there's still a little bit of issues on the edges here of the image. This this corner, this corner, this corner, I'll have little black edges. Um, and there's a little bit of a color shift from green to magenta across the image this way. So I'm just gonna crop away a little bit of the image here um, just with the crop tool. And I'm just going to start up here in this corner and bring it down like this and just crop away and you can take these corners and adjust it and i'm just trying to adjust it so that i have the omega the eagle the trifid and the lagoon all still in the image and that i can just get as much of the image as i i can without getting sort of the weird stuff in the corners okay that looks good i'm going to go ahead and press uh enter to accept that crop Okay, um, next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some saturation to the image. I'm gonna go back to the colors menu and go down to saturation and just take this uh, scale slider here and move it over to the right. I'm gonna move it to about 1.5. Okay, I'm just gonna uh, zoom in on the image now a little bit, just doing a shift equals or plus on my keyboard uh, to zoom in just check out a few of the details here oh this is weird it got <laughs> it also got flipped uh horizontal because this the triffid should be on this side of the lagoon okay so let's let's fix that uh that's under view flip and rotate let's flip uh horizontal horizontally i think yes okay Sorry, I don't know what all these flips and rotations are about, but now it's now it's right. So this is looking really nice. Um, I can see a lot of detail in here. Um, I think we can add even a bit more saturation though. So I'm gonna go back to colors, um, saturation, and add some more. Yeah, that looks good. So I added an, another 1.3 to the scale. And I think this is the is the right amount of saturation now. Okay, I'm really impressed by this. I think it actually is looking um, better than our results in Deep Sky Stacker and GIMP or Deep Sky Stacker in Photoshop. Um, it's a little bit more subtle, but also not as noisy and uh, I think um, uh, more polished looking. Okay. Um, Next, we're going to remove the stars from the image and then add them back in. Um, and so this is, we're, for this, we're gonna use a, another piece of software. So we've started in Serial, we've moved into GIMP. We're now gonna bring it out of GIMP, use another piece of free software called Starnet++, and then we'll finish back in GIMP. So to use Starnet++, we want to save this as a, a TIFF file again. Um, and so I'm going to do file export as, and I'm just going to save to the desktop and call it lagoon for starnet .tiff. Okay, so from Google, I'm just going to um, search for starnet plus plus like that. And the first uh, search result here is this sourceforge.net download site. And that's what you want to go to. And then uh, go over here to files. And if you do have PixInsight, you can get the PixInsight module. But um, assuming you don't have PixInsight, we're going to just get the standalone version. 
And so you would just go into version 1.1 here and then pick your operating system. So if you're on Windows, pick Windows or Win. If you're on Mac, pick this Mac OS. And if you're on Linux, pick the Linux one. And I'll just click on that. And then it will start downloading here. Okay, it's finished downloading. So I'm just going to open up those, uh, open up the zip folder and put it on my desktop. And if you look at the README, this is where it's going to give us instructions on how to use it. Okay, and basically we just have to look at this little um, shell file here. Uh, this is a, just a little command that's given. Um, and if we open that up, I'm just gonna open it with um, a text editor, but you can open it with uh, any kind of text editor, it doesn't matter. Um, all we're going to do is just change this right here to the name of our file. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to say lagoon for starnet.tiff. And then I want the output to just be lagoon starless. And then the last thing here is I'm just going to change the stride number to 32. What that means is that it will take a little bit longer to process than with a stride of 64, but it will give us a better result for, for removing the stars, um, especially with uh, wide field images like this one. I'm gonna go, go ahead and save that script, close out of that. Okay, with that done, we've edited the script, 32-bit uh, stride, it has the right file name. Um, we can go ahead and run the script. The way we do that is through a command line uh, program. So I'm just gonna use the built-in um, command line program on Mac, which is terminal. And to run it, we have to do two things. We first have to move to this directory. So I'm just gonna type in cd space to do change directory command and then drag this folder over. So CD space, and then go to the folder, hit enter. We're now inside the folder. And from there I can run this command just by dragging it over and hit enter again. Okay, and then it starts its thing. Um, it uh, reads the file, it tells me Yep, it's a 16-bit file with three channels. Here's the height and the width. Here's the uh, CPU I'm using with TensorFlow. Um, and then uh, this is the number of tiles that it's going to break the file up into. And then it's going to look at each one and remove stars from those tiles and then recombine the image. And then down here, it tells me how long it's gonna take for that to happen, um, a percentage as it's going. And uh, you can see it just went from zero to 1%. So it does take quite a while, probably at least an hour, maybe two um, on an image of this size. Okay, back in GIMP here, I'm going to do file open and open our new starless image. And uh, we're just going to apply a few uh, tweaks to it, uh, make it pop a little bit more. So I'm gonna go to colors, uh, curves, which uh, curves is basically just like a more advanced version of levels where you have your whole range of shadows to highlights based on this line right here. And you can place points wherever you want and uh, bring things up and down. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring up uh, the mids and bring down the shadows with this curves like this. This is called creating an S curve because it makes sort of like an S. Okay, and right now I'm in the value mode. I noticed that um, in the shadows, there's a little bit too much green. So I'm just going to bring down the green just a tad. like that, just by eye. It's a pretty subtle adjustment. And I think there's a little bit too much blue too. So I'm just gonna bring that down just a tad. Oh, 
Okay. That's good. I'm just going to go back to value and now just bring up the whole image just a little bit. Perfect. Okay, I'll click OK. And then um, I'm going to go back here and increase the saturation just a bit. Let's just do 1.15. Okay. And now that uh, this image is boosted, let's add back in our stars. We can do that by just doing edit, uh, copy visible, and edit, paste. Now, why did it come in flipped and <laughs> flipped again? I am gonna have to figure that one out. It's something that I did when I opened this image for the in the first place out of Cyril. It was like flipped, and then I I guess I chose the wrong thing. Um, sorry about that. Anyways, we can rotate this layer. Um, okay, we want the tools, transform tools, and I want to flip that layer. There we go. And I want to rotate it uh, 180 degrees. Okay. All right, so now we're back on <laughs> where we should be. Um, I can just call this pasted layer stars. And to this stars layer, what we want to do is change the mode from normal to screen. Um, so right up here in the in the layers panel, you'll see the word mode, and then it says normal. Just click on that word normal and change it to screen. And the first thing you'll see is the image will get a lot brighter, um, but you'll see a lot more detail in the image. Um, and that's perfectly normal. Basically what it's doing is it's it's uh, it's applying a sort of multiplication of the two images, but, but um, making the dark parts of this top layer transparent so that you're seeing into um, the image below. And what we have to do now is uh, reset our values, our um, black point and our white point on this image. Um, and we can do that with curves, but to do that, we first want to just basically create a copy of what we see here. So to do that, we're gonna go to layer, new from visible. So now we have this new visible layer on top. And on that visible layer, I'm gonna do colors, curves, and I'm gonna reset the black point just by dragging this shadow slider over. And then I'm just going to bring down the shadows just a little bit and bring up, uh, no, actually, I'd, I think just the whole image should just get a little bit darker. That looks better. Um, we still have this sort of green cast in the middle of the image here. Um, so let me just see here if I can fix that with a green curves. You know, that looks pretty good. That definitely helped a lot. Um, it maybe is making the top part of the image a little bit too blue um, by removing the green from the middle. Uh, if I really go for it, you can really see the top part of the image goes blue. So let's do this. Let's um, click OK. And let's make a copy of this visible layer or duplicate it. So I'm just going to do right click, duplicate layer. So now we have visible copy. I'm going to uh, go into this visible copy layer and basically um, bring down the blues in the top part of the image here. Till it looks right. There we go. But of course, now that just <laughs> that just uh, now we have the same problem in the middle. The middle getting too green. But what we can do is with this visible copy layer, we're going to add a layer mask. So I'm just going to right click and choose Add Layer Mask, and you can. Uh, 
leave it on this default, initialize layer mask to white, that's fine. And then we're gonna add a gradient to um, this layer mask. So let me grab my gradient tool here. And in the default mode, it goes from white to black. That's exactly what we want. And we want the top part of the image for this visible copy to apply, but down here in the middle, we don't want it to. So I'm just gonna drag a gradient from the top to the middle of the image. And hit enter to accept that gradient. So you can now see there's a gradient drawn onto the, the layer mask on this visible copy. If I turn that layer off and on, you can see what it's doing is it's correcting that really strong blue cast on the top of the image. Okay, there's definitely more that we could do with this, but I'm gonna call this good. Um, I really think it looks pretty neat. Um, a lot of detail in the Milky Way and the Lagoon and Trifid. Um, let's go ahead and save it. So of course, to save in GIMP, we can just do file save and save in GIMP's um, default format of XCF. And this way we could return to this and keep messing around with the layers here in GIMP. So I'll just call that lagoon.xcf, save that to the desktop. And then to uh, save in other formats, you do file export and you can just uh, put in whatever uh, ending you want. So if you wanted to save it as a 16-bit TIFF, you just leave there, uh, that is TIFF. I'm gonna save off a of JPEG, so I'm just gonna do .jpeg. JPEG is good for you know sharing on social media or online because it, it's compressed, so you can uh, send it more places and it loads faster. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and export that. I always export at 100% quality, so as little as compression um, as GIMP will do. Go ahead and export. And let's go ahead and take a look at our final result here. Okay, um, it's maybe a little bit um, oversaturated for some people's tastes. Maybe I could dial that down a little bit. And then we still have some color cast issues, like a little bit too red uh, in this corner, too red magenta in this corner, a little bit too green in the middle, and some other stuff up here. So we could continue working on those um, using that same tactic I showed you where if you apply a new layer and then apply a gradient mask, you can um, fix some of these color casts. But um, for a first start, this is definitely pretty cool looking. Um, this is under 10 minutes, um, not tracked, just uh, on a tripod with my Canon 60D, which is a stock uh, Canon 60D camera and my 50 millimeter Canon lens. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here just to show you some of the details. Another thing we didn't do is any noise reduction. So it is a little bit noisy because it's only uh, under 10 minutes of data, but it looks pretty good, I think. Uh, some nice detail here in the core of the lagoon. We even have that sort of extension of the lagoon over here. Uh, the Trifid looks nice. This star cloud looks nice. We have a little cluster over here. I don't remember. I think that's a Messier cluster, but I can't remember what it's called. And then we have the Omega and the Eagle up here at the top. And then, of course, really it's meant to be seen uh, in full like this with the whole uh, extent of these brilliant Milky Way stars, because uh, this is right into the core of the Milky Way. Okay, till next time, this has been Nico Carver uh, from nebulaphotos.com and clear skies, everyone.